Welcome to Flutter Teacher. In this video, we will learn what is anonymous function or lambda function in the Dart. So without wasting time, let's get started. The anonymous function or lambda function is actually a function without a name. We can also say it is a nameless function. So let's look at the syntax of this function. For this function, you cannot specify a written type and not even a name. That's the reason it's called the anonymous function. In order to define this function, simply we have to write the parameter list inside the pair of parentheses if the function accepts the parameter. Otherwise, we can omit this parameter list here. Then the body of function is enclosed within this opening curly bracket to closing curly bracket. And make sure that you should add semicolon at the end of this closing curly bracket to finish your function definition. Now the big question is, this function don't have a name. So how to call this function? So this function can be called in two different ways. The first one is just assign this function in some variable and call that function using a variable. Second option is we can pass this anonymous function as a parameter inside the another function that actually takes a function as a parameter. So in order to understand both the situation, let's jump into the dark pad. Now let's say I just want to define a function that returns me the cube of given number and I want this function as the anonymous function. So I need to write the pair of parentheses here. Then I'm passing a number that is n as a parameter and as a body of this function, I'm simply returning the cube of given number in the form of the n into n into n and that's it. Now I must place the semicolon at the end of this closing curly bracket. So this is actually a anonymous function or we can say it's a lambda function. Now, as I told you, it's a biggest question, how to call this function. Now, let me explain the first technique. So I must assign this function inside some variable. Let's say I'm writing var cube here and that's it. Now, in order to call this function, simply I need to call like this. Let's say I'm calling inside the print cube and I'm passing some number. Let's say I'm passing three. Let me format it. And when I run this program, you can see it will give me the cube of three that is opposed the 27. In this program, it is very important to observe the type of this Q variable. This Q variable is not a normal kind of variable. It is a variable of type function. So in case of that, we have a class called function. So cube is the variable of type function. Okay. And this is a variable of type function that actually accepts the integer type of parameter and returns the integer type of value. I can explicitly specify this Q variable as a function variable just by writing like this int then the function and int. So it's perfect. It means the cube is a variable of type function as such a function that takes integer value as a parameters and returns integer value as the result. Based on your requirement, we can definitely change the return type here and we can change the parameter list. Now let's look at the second example for using the anonymous function. You can see I have a list of names here that contains total three names in the list. Now, if you have watched my videos where I have talked about methods in the list class, so I can simply use for each method in order to print the items inside this list. The observable thing is this for each function actually takes a function as parameter. So if you have watched my video where I have talked about function, so you might remember that function can be passed as an argument to another function even a function can return a function as a return value so this for each function actually requires a function that takes individual value and performs some specific task and this function should have written type in the form of void so now there are two options either i can define a special function here and i can call this function inside this for each or i can simply write the anonymous function so that this function will be defined inside the for each and it will be called in the same place. So let's go for it. So I can write here like this. Now this is my anonymous function and here I can take the name. So this name is actually an individual item that will be taken from this list of names here and simply I can print the value of this name and that's it. Now when I run this program, you can see it will print the individual items that is individual names on the screen. Now in this case, the function that I have defined here is actually the anonymous function because it don't have a name. Even I haven't specified a return type here. 
So this is what the parameter list that function accepts and the opening and closing curly bracket specifies the body of function and simply I have single statement inside this function just to print the individual names from the list of names. That's it for this video. See you guys in the next video. If you really like the way I am explaining the concept then don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the bell notification button to get my latest videos.